you were invited to join the New England Adventist Heritage Tour. On this tour, you will have the opportunity to walk the ground that the Adventist pioneers walked, sing the songs that they sang, and learn what their passions were. As part of this tour, stories will be shared in which lessons from Adventist history will be applied to life today. Give yourself the chance to deepen your understanding of Adventist history and have an enjoyable time while doing so. You will visit many historic places, including the following. Mount Hope Cemetery in Rochester, New York. Two of James White's siblings are buried here, Nathaniel and Anna White. Jane Andrews' wife, Angeline, and their two daughters, Mary and Carrie, are buried next to Nathaniel and Anna White. Losing Angeline and his two daughters was a great blow to John Andrews. Another Adventist burial site in Mount Hope Cemetery attracts our attention. These are the graves of Jonathan and Carolyn Orton. Jonathan and Carolyn were among those who earnestly prayed in December 1865 for James White's recovery to health. We will also visit the Joseph Bates home in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. For Seventh-day Adventists, Fairhaven and New Bedford will ever be linked with Joseph Bates and his discovery of the Sabbath. It was here that Bates grew up and established his own family, and it was here that he traveled the world, rising to captain and part owner of his own ship. It was in New Bedford and Fairhaven that he heard William Miller preach and became an ardent advocate of the soon coming of Jesus Christ. It was here that he accepted the Sabbath and wrote tracts on topics that provided the theological foundation of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We'll visit Gore, Maine, where Ellen White was born. Gore, Maine is the birthplace of Ellen G. White. During her childhood, her father, Robert Harmon, alternated between farming in Gorham and Poland and operating a hat shop in Portland. The family moved from Gorham to Portland about the time of her birth in 1827. In 1829, they relocated to Poland, Maine, and about 1833, they returned to Portland. For the remainder of Ellen's childhood, the Harmon family lived in Portland. Soon after James and Ellen White's marriage on August 30, 1846, Robert and Eunice Harmon purchased a farm on Fort Hill Road in Gorham. For a little over a year following their marriage, the Whites lived with Ellen's parents. Their first son, Henry Nichols White, was born here on August 26, 1847. Portland was the center of Ellen White's early Christian experience. Here she and her family believed in the soon coming of Jesus after hearing William Miller preach at the Casco Street Christian Church. Here she was converted and joined the Chestnut Street Methodist Church. Here she was disappointed when Jesus did not come in 1844. In Elizabeth Haynes' home in Portland, she received her first vision and reluctantly shared it. It was in Portland that she first met her husband, James White. It was from here that she wrote her first letters to the Day Star describing her visions, and it was also here that she published her first broadside. And finally, it was also in Portland that she was injured at the age of nine when an older classmate threw a stone and hit her in the face. Washington, New Hampshire is often described as the birthplace of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Though this is not entirely accurate, it is certainly the location of the earliest Sabbath-keeping Millerite church that continues to this day as a Seventh-day Adventist church. Picturesque Washington, New Hampshire, with its changes in elevation and distinct New England appearance, was incorporated on December 13, 1776. The residents have long been proud that their town was the first to be named after George Washington. The William Miller Farm and Chapel is the place of spiritual renewal and commitment for many Adventists and a place of historical interest for many others. Located in Lowhampton, New York, it is just across the border from Vermont. The home of William Miller was purchased by the Adventist Heritage Ministries in 1984 and is partially restored. Various outbuildings, including a large barn, are on the property. William Miller built the chapel in 1848. It is owned by the Advent Christian Church, but is jointly operated by Seventh-day Adventists. There was no regular congregation meeting there. Rather, the chapel serves as a historical and spiritual monument to the Advent faith. Between the home and the chapel is Ascension Rock, overlooking the valley. It is composed of a form of gray limestone that is marked by glacial striations. The Hiram Edson Farm in Port Gibson, New York, is rightly called the theological birthplace of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It was in Port Gibson that the Sabbath and Sanctuary Doctrines came together in 1846. This farm is also one of the places where O.R.L. Crozier studied and received spiritual and relational support as he was writing material on the sanctuary. After the October 1844 disappointment, Edson had an experience of enlightenment that pointed his and Crozier's eyes to the heavenly sanctuary ministry of Jesus as the answer to the disappointment. Hearing about Ellen White's love for Jesus and the people from her letters helped me cast away the bitter taste of radical Adventist conservatism that is usually associated with Ellen White. I was able to use all of my senses and my emotions to immerse myself in the world and life of the pioneers. Learning 
happens whether you intend or not just by being in these places. I have become absolutely convinced that it is necessary for every single Adventist in the world to study, learn, and more importantly, understand the true heritage of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Come to the Center for Adventist Research and reserve your seat today.